don't know about you, but I like this season. It tenders my heart towards God because we celebrate His birth. And what a difference the birth of Jesus has made in us. And uh, I really thank God for that. Well, uh, one of my favorite, uh, favorite themes to study is, is theology. Because it studies about, it studies about God and Christ, the Holy Spirit, humankind, the enemy, the world, and all that stuff. And, and, and there is it's a beautiful subject to study. And uh, the more I read about God, I realize that uh, we don't know too much about Him. We don't know. And, and it is serious. We don't know because He's indescribable. There's no words to describe God. Uh, if you have been Christian for, for a number of years, maybe you remember a song that, uh, that uh, used, to, used to go like that. When we've been there 10,000 years, speaking about heaven, uh, we have no less to, to speak God's grace than when we first began. Can you imagine for the centuries and thousands of years to come, God will reveal to us, Himself to us. And we will never stop learning about Him. Believe me, I'm looking forward to that. Because there's so many things that I want to know about, about the Lord, about Jesus and all that stuff. So, uh, welcome, welcome this morning to our church. And uh, I'm happy to be up here up front to speak to you the Word of God. Happy to see you. Amen. And uh, my, my morning, my, my, my text this morning is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. It's only eight words. Oh, but, but before that, let me, let me do what they legally call a disclaimer, my disclaimer, okay? Uh, my disclaimer is, I don't speak English that good. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, make an effort to understand what I'm going to say. Amen. Uh, hopefully, it'll sound like English. Praise God. Well, would, you, would, you, would you stand up on your feet in, in reverence to the Word of God? Amen. Let's just, just be reverent to to our Lord, praise God. And I really hope that this morning you you get involved or you will be involved in the spirit of the season. Like Pastor Peter said, Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. Uh, first, Second Corinthians chapter uh, 9 verse 15 goes like this. It's only eight words. It's a uh, an easy verse to, to understand. Chapter 9, verse 15. It goes like this. Thanks be unto God for His indescribable gift. That's it. Eight words. Easy to learn. Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. Well, I don't know if I told you before this, I think I did, but I belong to the old guard, amen? That means I'm a little bit, uh, maybe a, a little bit too much old-fashioned. But before like, we get into the world, let's, 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 go, let's go to the Lord in prayer, amen? Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him for His blessing to anoint us, to, to speak to our hearts, amen? Well, would you do that for me? Yes. Father God, we just uh, love you this morning, God. There are no words to express our gratitude that we feel for you, God, that we have for you. Especially on these days when we uh, celebrate your coming to, the, to earth, Lord Jesus, and, and the great impact that you have, uh, not only in ourselves, but God, but in all humanity. Uh, we ask you, God, that you bless us this morning, that you uh, touch us, that you uh, make us 
come in, uh, and, and be under the influence of the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, and, and to learn about you. Give us the anointing, God, that we need. Anoint our minds, anoint our, our hearts, our spirits. And may we, may we just learn about you, Lord Jesus, because we need it, especially when we live in this world that lost its way a long time ago. Yes. We need you, Jesus. We need you more and more, more than ever. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Yes. Amen. Yes. You might be seated. Praise God. Let, let me let me give you a couple of statistics that I found very interesting, especially because this time is this time of the year we are concerned about choosing the right gift for Christmas. What are you going to give? What am I going to receive? And all the stuff. But uh, uh, let me ask you. Have you ever received an indescribable gift? Something that uh, when you receive it, there's no way to put it into, into words. Uh, like I told you before, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a news maniac. I'm always watching news, reading papers and stuff like that and that. And uh, many years ago, there was this news news lady that her name was uh, John London maybe you remember that I don't know that was back then when the when the earth was fresh and uh, he came with a, with a list of indescribable gifts presents that you don't know how to describe them and the first one that, that, that she showed on TV was, it was this, this car, this vehicle. It's a Jaguar, maybe you know about Jaguars. And this Jag uh, cost $587,000. Man, just to think about it. If you want to order one of those cars back in the day, you needed to go to the Jaguar dealership and, and put a, an $80,000 down. And they made it to order. They only made like a 250 a year. And when, when you receive the vehicle, you pay the rest of $500,000. So it is a $587,000 present. Feel free to give me one of those any Christmas <laughs> or any day. <laughs> Amen. And, 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 uh, and the second one was a polish. To polish your, your, your Jaguar 220, uh, you need to buy a, uh, an eight, eight ounce bottle of, of wax that costed $80,000. Eighty thousand dollars for eight for eight ounces of of this wax. Well, if you can afford half a million dollar car, you I bet I guess you can afford that wax too. And the uh, the the other present that uh, uh, John London came out with was the uh, the uh, he, he mentioned uh, a a. Uh, a toilet, toilet seat, okay? This maybe costed $300,000. It was silver and gold with precious stone all over. I didn't realize that you can go and sit in one of those things in the bathroom. Uh, amen. Uh, a mouse trap. A mouse trap costed $12,000. And... Uh, Twenty-seven thousand dollars for for uh, uh, sunglasses. Very nice, huh? I was thinking uh, all those those indescribable gifts staggered our minds. I was reading somewhere about this this uh, fancy preachers that uh, that uh, used to buy tennis shoes. 
for five thousand dollars, seven thousand. How can they do that? I mean, it's not like Nike's. It's not like a Michael Jordan's. No, eight thousand dollars, and these guys were wearing it like nothing in the church. I mean, that, that's that's something a little bit too much. Well, all, all those presents, like I told you, target our minds. <laughs> If you, if, if you seek to describe those gifts, you might have a trouble, problems. But I, I tell you what, and, and you, in, you might be witnesses to this because uh, uh, the media, TV, and newspapers, and ads, ads and this and that, um, will publish, will, will, make, will make public, public all this and uh, publicize it and buy time on TV to show that this, that you need to have these things and that your life will not go on without them. That's what they do. So, in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 9, Paul is writing about giving. The church of Achaia, of Corinth, uh, uh, we're collecting money for for the shoes in Jerusalem that were going through through very hard times, and he commend them because they were good givers. They were good uh, 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 offering givers, and uh, then then he he he, uh, he switches his attention to to God gift to God give sending Jesus to earth. The Lord Jesus, and he cannot find words to describe him, like I told you. He cannot find those words to describe him. He simply says, thank God for his undescribable gift. Now, at this time, like I told you, we do our best to, to, uh, to get involved with the wonderness of God's present. And not only us, uh, people use their very, uh, the very best talents to, to praise God, to serve God. Just like uh, uh, Handel's Messiah, that's a classic song for Christmas. Back, Christian uh, Christmas Oratorium. Another one is uh, hymns like uh, Joy to the World, Holy Night. Oh, silent night, little town of Bethlehem, my favorite one, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Some of the greatest musicians uh, have taken up the tools of the trade, and not only uh, musicians, but, uh, but uh, uh, I don't know what you call those guys, that, uh, uh, like Michelangelo, that that uh, makes statues out of, out of out of marble and stuff like that. Okay, painters, po poets, and and sculptures. That, that, that's that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, do something to pay tribute to God, to Christ, to the gift of God's love that He sent when He sent His Son. But Paul says, Thank be, "Thanks be." To God for his indescribable gift. Why does Paul, why Paul calls Jesus indescribable? Why? Have you ever asked that question? Why is he indescribable? I, I believe it is because of his nature. Christ is not, is not 50% uh, divine and 50% man when he was on earth. This is a mystery for us, and I'm not expecting you to understand it because I don't understand it either. But Christ was 100% God and 100% man. How was that? How the, the two natures uh, uh, get, to, get together without mixing one with the other? I don't know, that's a mystery to me. Perhaps that might be a good question for you as, as God when you get to heaven. But uh, one more time, let me ask you, 
how do you describe that which was which is a spirit because Christ is spirit amen uh, that which uh, is not physical is not material how do you describe God coming to be a man to be a little child in the manger and, and grew up in a in a in a, in a normal family of those days. How do you describe God that is powerful? How do you describe the eternal? Because he is not like us. He is not finite. He is not uh, uh, like one of us. He is eternal. Uh, how can we describe the indescribable? Yes. It is impossible. Paul says, uh, words cannot, dis cannot be adequate to describe Christ. Uh, in one of my, my studies in, in theology, uh, I came out to, to this uh, Council of Chalcedon. This the, 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 the most intelligent, the most bright minds of that time gathered together trying to describe God. Trying to describe Christ. And let me read you. I wrote it right here for you guys. Let me read you what they came out with. Look. It says. Perfect in God's head. And also in his manhood. Truly man. Reasonable. Rational soul. Body. Consubstantial. Co-eternal with the Father. According to his manhood. In all things like unto us. But without sin. Begotten before all ages, Father according to the Godhead, and these latter times for us, our salvation. Born of the Virgin Mary, according to his manhood, one and the same Christ our God. I mean, the brightest minds of that time, like I told you, uh, couldn't come out with, uh, with an answer. Quite frankly, I'm not expecting you to understand this that I read to you. You know why? Because I couldn't understand it either. Our mind doesn't reach that far to understand God. And our vocabularies is, are not adequate uh, to describe Jesus. That's why I believe that he is indescribable for his nature. Why? Because when he was with us, he was God in the flesh. And, and that goes, just, just with that, that goes beyond our understanding. Secondly, uh, I believe that he was indescribable because of the purpose of coming to earth. Uh, Paul he said, indescribable because in his purpose in coming to earth, the angels announced to the shepherds, unto you a child is born today in the city of Bethlehem that is the savior of the world. That is, that is awesome. And what do we celebrate in Christmas? We celebrate the fact that Jesus came into this world to save us. To save us. That was the purpose. And, and this Christ, the Bible says, he was, he was prophesied, he was predicted that he was going to be born in the place where the prophet says, in Bethlehem. Somehow God Move things from, but for them to move from 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 Nazareth of Galilee and walk, walk towards Judah to the city of Bethlehem because they were from the tribe of Judah and there is where he was born, Bethlehem. Hallelujah! And Micah prophesied of that, and so that's why he is indescribable. I, I think that Jesus. Uh, God's gift is indescribable because of his nature, because his purpose of coming to earth. But thirdly, it is indescribable because of the grace which Jesus is given to us. Yes. Well, if there was a, a class, I would ask you, how do you describe grace? How do you describe it? 
it is, it, is, it is not difficult to describe it, but to grasp it the way we should, to take it to understanding, man, that is hard for us. Grace, in, in, a, in a simple word, is, is a gift that we don't deserve. Let me ask you, do you think that you deserve going, going to heaven? No. The answer is no. It's not because not because you are you are a sinner because because sin came to us since we were born. You didn't need to do nothing. Just be born and you are a sinner. You born under, under the curse of sin. And yet God look look what the how amazing it is of God. Since, since the, the, the fall of humanity in, in the Garden of Eden, God had a plan in mind for our salvation. He told the serpent, you may crush him, you may bite him in the hill, but he's going to crush your head. In other words, God is going to inflict on the serpent that is the enemy a, a, a blow that would kill them, that would destroy them. And let me tell you, that was exactly what he was doing in the cross of Calvary. Even though apparently it looked like a defeat to our Lord. But God turned it around, hallelujah, when, when the enemy was celebrating the defeat of God. Man, he destroyed him completely. He put a plan, hallelujah, that, that made the enemy, the, 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 how do you say that? Let me find the, the correct word, hallelujah, that made him uh, uh, fall. In his, in, his, in, his, in his plans. And God, God was victorious in the cross. Why? Because whether we believe it or not, whether we accept it or not, the Lord was crushing the enemy's head in Calvary. Hallelujah. Paul says that uh, he, sh he put up the, uh, the, the, oh my God, I wish my English was better. <laughs> He put them to a shame, showing them publicly defeated. I read one theologian one time that said that says it was like a, like like a, uh, the Lord put honey in in all his body and then threw a whole bunch of feathers in his body and then sent him to walk through the town of Jerusalem. In other words, everybody was making fun of them. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Therefore, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this very seriously. Don't you ever feel defeated by the enemy. The enemy is already been defeated by our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I told you I'm a, I'm a news maniac. And sometimes that 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 uh, custom is not is not that good. A few months back, I was reading too much about about the evils of the world, about the, all the garbage that is going on in, in our country, and, and not only in our country, in, a, in the whole world. Evil peoples uh, making fun of Christians while they preach the gospel. Uh, men and women without God making fun of these preachers just for the, for the fact that they were preaching the gospel on the street. And I can relate to that because for, for, for many times, for many uh, months or years I believe, I preached on the streets too. And it is, it is awful when, when you have in front of you uh, somebody making fun of your preaching. It is awful. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the gospel always comes through. Yeah. Always comes through. Yeah. And, I, and I was feeling like a man, 
there's so many, there's so many. I was watching the, the Pride Parade that they call Pride Parade in New York through, through Fifth Street in New York, marching. So proud to be, to be gay. So proud to be lesbian. So proud of all, of all the garbage. I said, God, it seems to me like we fight in a war that, that, that we cannot win because we are a few comparing to all these people. Hallelujah. And one night when I was, before I went to bed, the Lord told me, all you need to be in the winning side is me by your side. Amen. Let me tell you, God never intended you for you to be the majority. Because God and you is the majority. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, because God is on my side, I will not be defeated. Amen. Don't you ever feel like, a, oh, poor me. I'm a Christian. I, I'm defeated because I'm God. No, you're not. Hallelujah. You're a son of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. God remains you and put in, in you the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. And put you on the way to heaven. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. We need to be reminded of that from time to time. Because with all the garbage that is going on in the world, sometimes you're going to feel defeated. Hallelujah. But open your eyes. Just like uh, uh, Elijah told Elijah, God, open the eyes of my servant and make them see there are more than one that are in our side that are enemies. It was just a little army that we that we're going to capture Elijah because they he says something about the Syrians. And the Bible says that God opened the eyes of, of Hisi, the servant of Elijah. And he said that when he opened the eye, he saw the mountains and the bodies and the valleys full of angels. And share your fire. That must tell us that, that you'll never be alone. Hallelujah. That God is in our side. And that we're not defeated. Hallelujah. And that our, our future is secure in God's hand. Yes. We need to learn that. We need to understand that. Don't you ever forget that. And when, when you feel like you're defeated. Like those days that I felt like that. Man. Come to the Lord. Instead of running away from Him, come to God. Hallelujah. And tell God, show me your glory. Hallelujah. I'm not going to tell you that He's going to appear to you with a, with a rainbow and, and tell you stuff. No. Hallelujah. But as you walk, as you start walking in Christ one more time, as you pick up your defeat, as you pick up your stuff and start walking again, God will reveal to you. Amen. God will reveal to you. Praise God. Many things will be great in our life. If we are defeated, when we feel like we are nothing and that we are overwhelmed by, by the sin and the garbage of the world, many things will be different. If we understand that God is in our side. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I tell you this because sometimes people think that that us preachers, we don't have no 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 problem, that we believe in God and always come out strong. It's not like that, believe me. I got my own battles. I got my own fights with the enemy. Hallelujah. And it's not easy. Just like we struggle, like you struggle, so we struggle too. Hallelujah. But with God's help, with God in our side, hallelujah, we can conquer the enemy. Hallelujah. And we can. I'm not making this up. 
I'm not telling you this just for you to feel good. I'm telling you this because the Bible, that is our constitution, says that to us. Yes. That we're not defeated. That we are not a pobrecito. That we are not a poor man. A poor guy because he's Christian. No! We are Christians. Hallelujah. Yeah. We believe in Christ. Many years ago, I learned a, a poem in Spanish. Let me tell you, let me see if I can translate that to you. It's called Marciano. He was, he was in, in Rome and, uh, and they were blaming him to, because the, the, the city burned, and it is true. Nero was, the, was Caesar in those days. And, and it goes pretty much like this. After they blame him, after they had him in the, in the, in the Roman circus to be killed by, by the lions, he stand up in front of, of, of Caesar's throne in the Colosseum and told him, Caesar, whoever told you that I, that I set the city on fire is lying to you. But if my sin is being Christian, it is true. I am Christian. I believe in Christ. I practice his doctrine. Hallelujah. And the best proof that I believe in God is because instead of hating you, I forgive you. Amen. Yeah. The poem goes, I can't remember too much about it. But it says, it seemed like a, the, the, the strength of one, the, the strength of one, to more than 10,000 made afraid. Because all the people present, when they saw Marciano, they retrieved like they were afraid of something. That was God. That was Christ. That was the presence of Christ on this man. And I could tell you many other stories, but my time is running out already. Let me go back to, to the undescribable gift. If I give a gift to somebody, I give presents to my wife, to my kids, to my grandsons. If one of these days I give you a present, maybe it is because you gave me one last year. And you caught me by surprise, so I owe you one. <laughs> I owe you one. But it's not like that with Christ. The Bible says that Christ died for us when we were sinners. He don't owe us nothing. He don't owe you nothing. You see, in my, in my Christian life, from time to time, I have I found Christians that uh, if they don't say it with their words, they, they, they say it with the way they are, God, what a great thing you did when you saved me. Yeah. What a... Oh man, when I came into Christianity, you gain so much because I'm so so talented and I'm so I can do this, I can preach, I can teach, I can play this and this and that. God, it was a great thing for you to save me. <laughs> Don't you ever have that 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 thought in your mind? Yeah. And if you have it, rebuke it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You're gonna have problems understanding this. But you did not add nothing to God. Nothing. When the Lord saved me, it was I who won. It was I who received all the blessings. He didn't receive nothing. So don't believe that you added something to the Lord. That you added something to the church. 
the truth is that the church will go on because God is with the church with or without you yes. understand that please yes. and serve God with joy because he saved you yes. and don't change that attitude God I added so much to the church. I added so much to, to Christianity. Oh man, what would Christians do without my help? Yes. Like they used to say in, back in the day, that's Balani. <laughs> I don't know what they meant by that, but they used to say that. That's nothing. It was you, it was I who came in the winning end. Because the Lord came to our life. Yeah. So that's the effect. I believe that, that, that he is indescribable Because of the effect that he has on us. He transformed us. He changed our way of thinking. He made us better husbands. Better fathers. Better citizens. Hallelujah. You see. That's what happened when we receive Christ. When you open the greatest gift, the indescribable gift of Christ in your life. How that's what happened. He made you a better person. Why? I don't know if I told you, I think I did. I, I told you this before. I was thinking on dying alcoholic when I was 25 years old. Young and good looking, hallelujah. <laughs> and yet, I was planning on dying alcoholic. And, and the Lord intervened in my life. Hallelujah. I never thought of, of being Christians, much less to, to preach the gospel. I never thought of going to a Bible school, hallelujah. For so many years. And God gave me all those privileges. He took me to places. And made me say it and do things. That I never thought I would. I don't know if I told you this. But God gave me the privilege. Of preaching the gospels. In houses. In churches. In rest homes. In hospitals. In jails. Hallelujah. On the streets. Hallelujah. Isn't that way too much for a guy that was planning of dying alcoholic on the streets of AP? Oh, yeah. It is great. Hallelujah. It is great. Why? Because he transforms people. Yeah. If you let yourself be guided and taken by Christ, I don't care what your problem is. I don't know what your problem is. But you know what? I know my Savior. I know my Savior. And just like today, He's standing right next to me in here. He's been there all the time. In good times, in bad times. His promise is, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. I wish I could tell you more, but my time is running out. Run out already, but I want to uh, I, I wish let me tell you what one of my, my my favorite preachers used to say his name was Spurgeon Charles Spurgeon we studied Charles Spurgeon when we were in school and he used to say I wish that all the people of the world had a a sign in the back of us, of, of, us of, of his clothes. Saved, not saved. Saved, not saved. We don't. We don't. I don't know who you are saved or who you are not. Sometimes I can identify that you're saved because of the way you behave with in church. And I think he is saved. He's He's Christian. He's my brother. But it's hard. In, in a group like this. I don't know how many are we. Maybe 30, 40. Chances are. That some of you. 
heaven opened the indescribable gift that Paul speaks about. Please, open it up. Open it up. Yes. And take it with you. And apply it to your life. Hallelujah. And you'll be surprised of the things of the that God is going to show you the places where He is going to take you. And as you go and, 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 and take a hold of Him and never let go, He might turn you into a preacher. Hallelujah. He might make you His messenger. Hallelujah. And make you say, Things that you never thought that you would. Do it. And you'll be excited. And a time is going to come when you can say, For me to live is Christ. Yeah. And to die is gain. Yeah. Is gain. Yeah. You will not be afraid of death. You will not be afraid of the situation. He will be the best Christians, even when Joe Biden is in the White House. <laughs> even when Kamala Harris is the Vice President. He will be in fire for the Lord. Yes. And let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, that's the kind of Christianity that we need. Yes. People that say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it's the power of God unto salvation. Yeah. And you're going to feel that he comes to you. Yeah. And you're going to feel him, him standing next to you. Hallelujah. Yeah. You're going to find God and Christ in places yeah. where you never thought it would be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes in people that you hate. Sometimes in places where you never thought of that he would be. That is my Christ. That is my Jesus. That is the Holy Spirit guiding me. Yes. And you're going to get excited about your Christian life. Yes. And you'll never be alone. Yes. Open up your present this morning. Yes. Open up your present, your indescribable gift that God has for you. Stand up with me please. Stand up with me. Oh come let us adore him. Oh come let us adore him. Oh come let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Oh, come let us adore him. Sing it, sing it. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Christ the Lord. For he is worthy for only he is worthy for only he is worthy he cries the Lord we love you God we love you Christ Thank you for your indescribable gift, God. Thank you. We praise you, God, because what a difference the opening of that indescribable gift made to us, God. We praise you. We thank you, God. We thank you for Jesus Christ. Our present, hallelujah, the indescribable gift to humanity. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I pray for those that don't know you yet. Yeah. 
Even in the shoes, God, touch him. Touch him. They don't need no more money. They don't need no new car. They need you, Lord God. They need you. Bless us this morning, Lord Jesus. Start changing our lives, our purpose. Start changing our persons, God. We love you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks be to God for the indescribable gift. Amen. Consider yourself this means that you need prayer. I'm going to stick around here for a while. I would like to pray for you. Believe me, I really do. And I'm going to stay here for a while. Amen. The rest of you, you can be this miss in the name of Jesus. Amen.